Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 24th of January 2022. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Consider the following statements with respect to Sri Ramanujacharya. Number 1. His book Vedartha Sangraha is a review and commentary on Brahma Sutras. Number 2. His celebrated system of philosophy is known as Vishishtadvaita. Number 3. The statue of equality being installed to mark his 1000th birth anniversary is made up of a combination of gold, silver, copper, brass and zinc. Which of the given statements is or are incorrect? This article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about the statue of equality. That is, the statue of the 11th century reformer and Vaishnavite saint Sri Ramanujacharya. A 216 foot tall statue of Sri Ramanujacharya is all set to be unveiled on the 5th of February. And this statue is coming up at Muchintal in Telangana. This article here also says that this statue has been built by Aerospan Corporation in China and has been shipped to India. And it is made up of pancha loha, that is gold, silver, copper, brass and zinc. Now let us go back to the question and learn more about Sri Ramanujacharya while we answer the question. As we've already discussed, he is an 11th century philosopher and a saint and is known for his system of philosophy which is known as Vishishtadvaita, that is qualified monism. This Vishishtadvaita is one of the three sub-schools in Vedanta. The other two are Adi Shankaracharya's Advaita or Absolute Monism and Madhvacharya's Dvaita or Dualism. And we have to remember here that Ramanujacharya is known for qualified monism or Vishishta Advaita. So statement number two is correct. It is a non-dualistic school of Vedanta philosophy. Now talking about his works or his books. Yes, Vedartha Sangraha was authored by Ramanujacharya. But this book is a summary of the meaning of the Vedas and it is not a review and commentary on the Brahma Sutras. His commentary on the Brahma Sutras is compiled in his book known as Sri Bhashya. So statement number one is incorrect. He has also written many other books such as the Bhagavad Gita Bhashya which is a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita and also some minor works such as Vedanta Pida, Vedanta Sara and Nitya Grantham. Now coming to statement number 3. As we've already discussed, statement number 3 becomes correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A which is one only because the question is asking us for the incorrect statements. Moving on to question number 2. Hoganakal Integrated Drinking Water Project has been a source of dispute between which of the following states? Option A. Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Option B. Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Option C. Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. Option D. Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. What is the context? According to this article in the Hindu newspaper today, the Tamil Nadu government has said that it will prepare a detailed project report to implement the second phase of the Hoganical Integrated Drinking Water Project. And hence, we've taken this question. This Hoganical project is being undertaken at Hoganical, which is in Dharampuri district in the state of Tamil Nadu. So, this particular project aims to supply safe drinking water to drought-prone and fluorosis-affected Dharmapuri and Krishnagiri districts of Tamil Nadu. Now, the Karnataka government, which is against this project, believes that the Tamil Nadu government is trying to implement the phase 2 of Hoganical project as a counter to Karnataka's Mekedatu project, which is yet another multi-purpose project on River Kaveri. Coming back to the question, both these projects that is the Mekedatu project as well as the Hoganical Integrated Drinking Water project have been a source of dispute between the states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Therefore, option B is the right answer. There is a mention of yet another such project in today's newspaper that is the Dindi Lift Irrigation Project. The task for you for today is to let us know which state is carrying out this particular project. Write your answers in the comment section below. Now let us take up question number 3. Consider the following statements with respect to INSACOG. Number 1. INSACOG is a consortium of national laboratories formed to monitor the genomic variations in the SARS-CoV-2. It is a joint initiative of the Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Department of Biotechnology, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research that is CSIR and the Indian Council of Medical Research that is ICMR. 
Number three, the Genomics for Public Health in India, which is also known as Indigen Program, was launched by INSACOG in 2020. Which of the given statements is or are correct? Pause the video, mark your answer. Now let us discuss the answer. Say this INSACOG or Indian SARS-CoV-2 Genomics Consortium is a multi-lab agency that was set up by the Indian government and this was set up for sequencing and analyzing the genome data that was related to SARS-CoV-2 virus. So it was formed in order to help us understand the super spreader events, the outbreaks and also how to strengthen the public health interventions by the government. So this particular consortium was formed in the year 2020. It started off as a consortium of 10 laboratories but now has many more labs across the country as a part of this consortium. So statement number one becomes correct. Statement number two is also correct because it is a joint initiative between the Ministry of Health, the Department of Biotechnology, CSIR as well as ICMR. Coming to statement three. This Indigen program was launched by Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, which is CSIR. This program was launched to collect as well as sequence the genomes of ethnic Indian population in order to develop better public health applications. So this Indigen program was launched by CSIR in April 2019 and not by INSACOG in 2020. Therefore, statement number three becomes incorrect. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, 1 and 2 only. Only. For more information on INSACOG, you can go back to the 3rd January daily quiz by clicking on the info card that will appear on the top right corner of your screen now. Why have we taken this question? There is a reference to INSACOG on the front page of the daily edition of the Hindu newspaper today and that is why we've taken this question. Moving on to question number 4. Which of the given statements with respect to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose is or are correct? Number 1. He is the author of the book titled Hind Swaraj that covers the Indian independence movement from 1920 to 1942. Number 2. He started a newspaper called Swaraj. Number 3. Soon after his release from the prison in Mandalay, he became the General Secretary of Indian National Congress or INC. Number 4. He founded the Naujawan Bharat Sabha in 1939 as a faction within the Congress. What is the context? This article in the PIB today has a reference to Netaji's birth anniversary. So this topic becomes all the more important for your prelims as well as for your mains because it is the 125th birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. And the UPSC has a tendency to frame questions on such topics when it is the 50th or 100th or 125th anniversary. Now let us discuss the answer. Let us take a look at the first statement. Yes, Netaji did write a book that covered the Indian independence movement from 1920 to 1942. But was it titled Hind Swaraj? No. Hind Swaraj was authored by Mahatma Gandhi, so this statement becomes incorrect. Another task for you for today is to let me know the name of this book written by Netaji that talked about India's independence movement between 1920 to 1942. What was the name of this book? Type your answers in the comment section. Now, Subhash Chandra Bose played a major role in enlightening the students, the Indian youth as well as the labourers in Calcutta. He was eager to see India as an independent federal and republic nation and for this he also started a newspaper called as Swaraj. So statement number two is correct. For being involved in such nationalist activities, Netaji was sent to prison in Mandalay in 1925. Later, he was released in the year 1927 and soon after he became INC's General Secretary, that is the General Secretary of the Indian National Congress. So statement number 3 is correct. Coming to statement number 4. If you have revised history, you know that Naujawan Bharat Sabha was founded by Bhagat Singh. So statement number 4 becomes incorrect. In 1939, Netaji formed the All India Forward Bloc as a faction within the Congress. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, 2 and 3 only. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2020. With reference to India's desert national park, which of the following statements are correct? Number 1. It is spread over two districts. Number 2. There is no human habitation inside the park. Number 3. It is one of the natural habitats of the great Indian bustard. Select the correct answer using the code given below. 
say India's Desert National Park is spread over two districts, correct? That is Jaisalmer and Barmer districts in Rajasthan. So statement number one becomes correct. Now coming to statement number two, please note that while human activities are normally not allowed here, many villagers lived inside the Desert National Park. So statement number two becomes incorrect. We all know that this is the natural habitat of great Indian bustard. Therefore, statement number 3 is correct. This brings us to our answer which is option C, 1 and 3 only. Now let us take up the fact of the day. In this segment today, let us discuss the massacre of tribals by Indians in Sabarkanta in the year 1922. What is the context? Gujarat's tableau at the Republic Day Parade in Delhi will showcase the massacre of about 1,200 tribal freedom fighters of Sabarkanta district by the British. So what exactly happened in 1922? Who were killed in this massacre and why? Let us understand all of this in detail. So according to the official records of this particular incident, on the 7th of March 1922, in the remote corner of Gujarat that was inhabited by the Bhil tribes, that is in the Sabarkanta district, these tribal people belonging to Bhil tribe had gathered on the banks of river Har to protest against the land revenue system imposed by the British. That is, they opposed the Lagan or the land tax. And these tribals were protesting there under the leadership of Motilal Tejavat. Here, also please remember a fact that Motilal Tejavat was also known as Gandhi of Koliari by the tribals. What happened on this fateful day is the soldiers from Mewad Bhil Corps arrived at the procession and following the directions of its officer, Major H.G. Saturn, they fired on the gathering. And close to 1,200 innocent Bhils lost their lives in this incident of unprovoked firing. Two wells here, that is Dikhadiya and Dudiya, were overflowing with the bodies of these tribal freedom fighters. So this horrific incident, which took place just three years after the Jallianwala Bagh massacre of 1919, was largely forgotten. Some historians have also termed this as Gujarat's Jallianwala Bagh. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.